Thou hast turned my mourning into dancing for me. Thou hast put off my sackcloth. Thou hast turned my mourning into dancing for me and girded me with gladness. To thee and my glory may sing praise unto thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee for ever. And we will be reading that today from Psalm 30, verse 11. Put to a tune years ago. That's one I've been singing for a long time. Mel, good morning to you. Good morning, August. Nice to have you brothers here on this August 8th. August, we're glad to have you here in August. August 8th. I bet you've taken a lot of kidding over that. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. We are welcoming a brand new day, and I welcome you to come and hear the word of the Lord for this day as we go through 365 days reading the entire Bible through once out of the one-year Bible and the Psalms and the Proverbs twice. So it is a wonderful thing and <clears throat> my whole point of being here continually is to stir you up. Many people have not opened up their Bibles in a long time, Miss Yolinda and Melissa, and we are faithful then too when we step out and say, well, I'll do it and see if I can cause them to get interested. Open up these Bibles, Miss Kathy. She gets in there and digs out all these beautiful graphics right there for you to just touch and go to that illustrate what we read every day, it is wonderful. So shalom and good morning to you, Miss Connie. And this day on August 8th, we are going to pick up in the book of Ezra, the wonderful prophet of Ezra. And we are in chapter 7, Ezra 7, hallelujah to the Lamb. And this is just more, 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 more. <clears throat> of the decree and everything that took them back to begin to rebuild the torn down temple. So let's begin and we're going to sing again. Get ready. I know a lot of you out there probably know that little tune to Psalm 3011. Now after these things, all the things we read about yesterday and the day before, after these things, in the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Ezra, the son of Sariah, the son of Azariah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Shalom, the son of Zedak, the son of Ahitub. We're making sure we got the right Ezra, let me tell you here. The son of Amariah, the son of Azariah, the son of Mariot the son of Zerahiah, the son of Uzi, the son of Buki, the son of Abishua, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the chief priest. So just look at there. Ezra's wonderful descendants and heritage goes clear back to Aaron. This Ezra, no doubt about which one we're talking about, right? <laughs> this Ezra came up from Babylon, and he was a skilled scribe in the law of Moshe, Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. The king granted him all his requests according to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. Oh, that's what we want, isn't it? the hand of the Lord upon us. And it is. He is pleased. We are reading his word early in the morning. Some of the children of Israel, the priests, the Levites, the singers, the gatekeepers, and the Nethanim came up to Jerusalem in the seventh year of King Artaxerxes. And Ezra 
came to Yerushalayim in the fifth month, which was in the seventh year of the king. On the first day of the first month, he began his journey from Babylon. <clears throat> and on the first day of the fifth month, he came to Yerushalayim according to to the good hand of his God upon him. And here's the reason, here's the reason. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it. Oh, that's a condition we wanna take in for, um, for ourselves. One of the reasons that we're reading, that we can dig out these wonderful descriptions of what pleases the Lord. He had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach statutes <clears throat> and ordinances in Israel. So he's a great asset coming home to help with it all. This is a copy of the letter that King Artaxerxes gave Ezra, the priest, the scribe, expert in the words of the commandments of the Lord <clears throat> and of his statutes to Israel. Artaxerxes, king of kings, to Ezra the priest, a scribe of the law of God of heaven. Perfect peace and so forth. I issue a decree that all those of the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites in my realm who volunteer to go to Jerusalem may go with you. And whereas you are being sent by the king and his seven counselors to inquire concerning Judah and Jerusalem with regard to the law of your God, which is in your hand, and whereas you are to carry the silver and gold which the king and his counselors have freely offered to the God of Israel, whose dwelling is in Jerusalem. And whereas, wow, this is really legal, isn't it here? It is just great. Good morning, Miss Elizabeth. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> here comes our little teacher, Scott. Praise God. He will give us some wonderful insights. And whereas all the silver and gold that you may find in all the province of Babylon, along with the free will offering of the people and the priests, are to be freely offered for the house of their God in Jerusalem. Now, therefore, be careful to buy with this money bulls, rams, and lambs, with their grain offerings and their drink offerings and offer them on the altar of the house of your God in Jerusalem. And whatever seems good to you and your brethren to do with the rest of the silver and the gold, do it according to the will of your God. Oh, this is, this is awesome. This this king is with it, isn't he? Also, the articles that are given to you for the service of the house of your God deliver in full before the God of Jerusalem, and whatever more may be needed for the house of your God, which you may have occasion to provide, pay for it from the king's treasury. Wow. <clears throat> you can't do better than that walking down the road with the hand of the Lord on you and all the money you want from the king. <laughs> oh, well, hallelujah. 21, verse 21. And I, even I, Artaxerxes the king, issue a decree to all the treasurers who are in the region beyond the river that whatever Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law of the God of heaven, may we require of you, <clears throat> Let it be done diligently, up to 100 talents of silver, 100 cores of wheat, 100 baths of wine, 100 baths of oil, and salt without prescribed limit. 
Oh, glory to God. Whatever is commanded by the God of heaven, let it diligently be done for the house of the God of heaven. For why should there be wrath? Here's, <laughs> here's what's down in the king's heart. Very good reason. For why should there be wrath against the realm of the king and his sons? <laughs> you better believe it. You have it all. And so it's wonderful that you are giving it to Ezra. <clears throat> Let's take care of this throat here. Also, we inform you that it shall not be lawful to impose tax, tribute, or custom on any of the priests, Levites, singers, gatekeepers, Nethanim, or servants of this house of God. And you, Ezra, according to your God-given wisdom, set magistrates and judges who may judge all the people who are in the region beyond the river, <clears throat> all such as know the laws of your God, and teach those who do not know them. Whoever will not observe the law of your God and the law of the king, let judgment be executed speedily on him, whether it be death or banishment or confiscation of goods or imprisonment. Wow. You can go the limit, Ezra. You have it in writing from the king. Wow. Good morning, Miss Maria. <clears throat> Blessed be the Lord God of our fathers, who has put such a thing as this in the king's heart to beautify the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem, and has extended mercy to me before the king and his counselors and before all the king's mighty princes. So I was encouraged as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me. And I gathered leading men of Israel to go up with me. And we move right along to chapter 8 of Ezra. And oh, Scott, please <clears throat> phonetically write out for me how you say Ezra. I don't know that one. These are the heads of their father's houses. And this is the genealogy. Oh, you know I'm excited about that. I mean, look at how it was written here to trace this Ezra. There must have been many people named Ezra, but they traced this Ezra through all the fathers clear back to Aaron. Clear back to Aaron. These are the heads of their fathers' houses, and this is the genealogy of those who went up with me from Babylon in the reign of King Artaxerxes, of the sons of Phinehas, Gershom, of the sons of Ithamar, Daniel, of the sons of David, Hattush, of the sons of Shechaniah, of the sons of Perash, Zechariah, and registered with him were 150 males, of the sons of Pahat Moab, Eliahoni, the son of Zerahiah, and with him 200 males, of the sons of Zechaniah, ben Yehaziel, and with him 300 males. Of the sons of Adin, Ebed, the son of Jonathan, and with him 50 males. Of the sons of Elam, Yeshiah, the son of Ataliah, and with him 70 males. Of the sons of Shepatiah, Zebediah, the son of Mishael, and with him, 80 males. Of the sons of Joab, Obadiah, the son of Yehiel, and with him, 218 males. Of the sons of Shelomit, ben Yozapeiah, and with him, 160 males. Of the sons of Bebi, Zechariah, the son of Bebi, and with him 28 males. 
of the sons of Zagad, Yohanan, the son of Hakatan, and with him 110 males of the last sons of Adonikam, whose names are these, Elepelet, Yeiel, and Shemiah, and with them 60 males. Also of the sons of Bigvi, Uthiai, and Zebud, and with them 70 males. Now I gathered them by the river that flows to Ahava, and we camped there three days. And I looked among the people and the priests and found none of the sons of Levi there. And then I sent for Eleazar, Ele Ariel, Shemiah, Elnatan, Zarib, Elnatan, Natan, Zechariah, and Mishalam, leaders also for Yorarib and Elnatan, men of understanding. That's who we want. And I gave them a command for Ido, the chief man at the place, Kasapia. And I told them what they should say to Ido and his brethren, the Nethanim, at the place Kasapia, that they should bring us servants for the house of our God. And then by the good hand of God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding of the sons of Mali, the son of Levi, the son of Israel, namely Sherebiah, with his sons and brothers, 18 men, and Hashabiah, and with him Yeshiah of the sons of Merari, his brothers and their sons, 20 men, also of the Nethanim, whom David and the leaders had appointed for the service of the Levites, 220 Nethanim, all of them were designated by name. I am pronouncing Ezra correctly? <laughs> His name means help. Boy, that's what we're reading, isn't it? We're gathering these guys up here saying, well, all right, we need a good uh, representation here. All right, well, thank you, Scott. The temple courtyards are called etzratim, meaning help. Ooh, very good. All right, we're getting an education, y'all. Let's move right along to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this, but he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts then each one's praise will come from God. Oh, isn't that good? Now these things, brethren, I have figuratively transferred to myself and Apollos for your sakes, that you may lean, learn in us not to think beyond what is written, that none of you may be puffed up on behalf of one against the other? For who makes you different from another? And what do you have that you did not receive? Now, if you did indeed receive it, why do you boast as if you had not received it? Very good questions. 
You are already full. Oh, isn't that the truth? I mean, we have been given so much. You are already rich. You have reigned as kings without us. And indeed, I could wish you did reign, that we also might reign with you. For I think that God has displayed us, the apostles, last, as men condemned to death. For we have been made a spectacle to the world, both to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are distinguished, but we are dishonored. To the present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and we are poorly clothed and beaten and homeless. And we labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we endure, being defamed, we entreat. We have been made as the filth of the world, the offscoring of all things until now. I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children, I warn you, for though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you, imitate me. For this reason, I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Wow. Isn't this something? <clears throat> now some are puffed up as though I were not coming to you. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord wills, and I will know not the word of those who are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What do you want? Shall I come to you with a rod or in love? and a spirit of gentleness. <laughs> and I mentioned to Kathy, <laughs> particularly that last paragraph there, how would that fly in most of the churches today? Shall I come to you with a rod or in love and a spirit of gentleness? Good question, huh? <clears throat> All right, we move right along to Psalm 30. Psalm 30, uh, it says here, a song at the dedication of the house of David. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you, and you healed me. Oh Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Now in my prosperity, I said, 
I shall never be moved. Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face, and I was troubled. I cried out to you, O Lord, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it declare your truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. <clears throat> Lord, be my helper. For you have turned my mourning into dancing for me. You have put off my sackcloth. You have turned my mourning into dancing for me and girded me with gladness. To thee and my glory may sing praise unto thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee for ever. Oh, for ever to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent oh lord my god i will give thanks to you forever and don't you feel that way oh i know you do i know you do so let's wrap up today's wonderful reading with proverbs 20 verses 28 through 30 proverbs chapter 20 and verses 28 through 30. Mercy and truth preserve the king, and by loving kindness he upholds his throne. The glory of young men is their strength, and the splendor of old men is their gray head. Blows that hurt cleanse away evil, as do stripes the inner depths of the heart. Mm. You may be suffering some bro blows or feel like some heavy stripes are hitting you. <clears throat> but there's nothing that can happen to any of us that the Lord won't use to his glory and for our good, right? We look back on issues and times in our lives when we didn't think we would make it. We didn't think we would make it. And look what he did with all that. And you're here today. He, brought, he didn't let us go down to the pit. He took us on. And the path is getting narrower. And it should, right? For we want to be like Jesus. Let's close in prayer. Father God, wonderful, wonderful Father, I'm trying so hard, Lord, to picture your throne room. I'm, so, I'm trying so hard to see you on your throne and your wonderful son, Jesus, right at your right hand interceding for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for showing us and that it could be documented in your word that you rose again from the dead, that you went down to hell and you took the keys and they're in your hand now. And that you went on up to heaven, alive, resurrection, no other, no other religion can claim that and prove it, N none. But we know it's true, and it is our hope. Thank you for this, Lord. We pray to you in great thanksgiving for this new day, for all of the wonderful things we know that you have given us. And you said you've given us all things. You've given us all things. Lord, we hold up Israel. 
we hold up Yerushalayim. We ask, Lord, once again, we're, we never tire of praying this prayer. <clears throat> we ask you, Lord, to bring peace to Yerushalayim, to bring peace clear to all the borders of Israel, and particularly, Lord, extra, extra protection at the borders where they are so close to those that hate them, those that want to destroy them, those that hope they run from the land. They hope they give up, that they can come across and claim it back. It's a fierce, fierce spiritual battle. So Lord, I'm asking that you be with your precious people, particularly the brave ones right on the borders. Be with the little children, Lord, that they not live in a, a whole bunch of fear, that fear is rebuked, that it's dealt with with faith and prayer every day by the mothers and fathers of those families, that those children grow up strong and not fearful and damaged in their souls. Bring healing, Lord, to all those who need healing in Israel. Heal, Lord, please, all those affected by the virus, all those who are struggling, those who have just made Aliyah. They have just come home to the land. And perhaps they are fearful in their hearts. They are struggling. They need to know the customs. They need to know the language. They need to depend on God. They've been brought overnight from where they were used to cast out years ago. And now they're home. They're excited. Help them, please. Holy Spirit, Rakakodesh, come in and be their guide and show them that they come upon the plan that our Father has for them. He has a plan for each and every one. Lord, please give Bibi Netanyahu wisdom, wisdom and understanding and compassion. And Lord, the members of the Knesset and all the country are militarily trained. Keep them sharp in it, Lord. They all have kits, regular kits, prepared for the worst kind of attack. Lord, be with those who are in training right now and show them, show them where they should be on a minute-by-minute -minute basis that peace is maintained in Yerushalayim and in Israel all over. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I hold up America to you. And I'd ask, Lord, you would stir us up, stir up the church, open up the doors, open up the doors, and let the people come in and praise God without fear. Let it happen all over at once so that it's such a strong move. We prevail. Father God, I'd ask that you would show us, each one of us, our mission for this day. Show us, Lord. We're excited to know. Show us, Holy Spirit. We want to know. What do you want us to do today? What do you want us to be today? Lord, I hold up President Donald J. Trump, very key person in your plan today. Lord, I'd ask you to keep strong angels all around him and every member of his family and all of the administration, those who are truly and honestly working with him to do what is right to keep on going no matter what kind of attack they come under. Lord, I want to thank you for bringing our president 
right back to where I lived, little old Clyde, Ohio area. Thank you, Lord, <clears throat> that he visited that Whirlpool company and brought encouragement and complimented them, uplifted them. Lord, let every small business be encouraged by his words. He came. He cares. He's working for them. He's working for the Americans. Father God, I'd ask you to keep him on the straight and narrow path you have for him. Speak to his heart today that he not lean to the left nor the right, but that he hear your voice above the clamor of all of the people, the clamor of those who are lying. Father God, I'd ask you to give the American people a clear spirit to not be deceived, to recognize any kind of deception and not swallow it. All of us, Lord, help me that I don't swallow things that are not true. We give you praise, Lord, for all we see your hand doing. It's an exciting time to live. Thank you, Lord, that you timed our generations, our genealogy, to where we are alive today, to be prayer warriors, to spread your gospel, to use our resources for your kingdom. Show us how to do that, Lord. We will give you all the praise, all the glory, and I know you're hearing all of the prayers and the voices of your sons and daughters this day. And if you are here today and you have never accepted Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior. You might go to church. You might be very faithful. On the other hand, you might never have stepped inside a church. But you've come out of curiosity to hear this reading. If that's you, then I ask you, please, make this important decision today. Just bow your head. Get on your knees if you can. And by faith, by faith, not with a lot of understanding, that will come. But by faith, just at this moment, say this. Father God in heaven, if you're there and you hear me, would you show me my sin if I have any? And if so, would you, would you help me? And would you forgive me? Please. They say something about this blood of you, Jesus, that it will somehow help me and cover my sin. Please, show me. And I ask you today, in this forgiveness, please, come into my heart. Show me that you can. Show me that you did. Let me see something. Let me feel something. Let me know in my innermost being that you came. And I will thank you. And, and I, will, I will search for you. I will look for you. Amen. If you said those words, that's the most important decision you will ever make. You now have him in your heart and in your life. You have a brand new beginning at this very moment. We all have experienced this. We all have a story to tell that it happened to us. If you're brave and you really did do that and you're listening to me, we would love it if you told us that. If you just say, I prayed with Jane and I, I asked Jesus to come in, we will be so happy with you. We will rejoice with you. We won't mock you and we will be with you. We welcome you into the kingdom of God this day. And all of God's people cried a hearty amen and went on with their own prayers and their own day.
I love you all so much. God bless you. Bye-bye.